The name of this video is Ira Krakow's Blender 2.50 Alpha 1 Python Tutorial Part 4. Up to this point, we've been looking at the Blender 2.5 Python environment and to scripts to control windows, panels, and operators. We haven't done anything with actual Blender objects. It's time to see how to change and even create new Blender objects in Python. In this tutorial, we will see how to create a Blender Mesh, a torus. The script is part of the Blender 2.5 installation as an operator creation script in the op folder under scripts. You will see how properties, attributes of the torus such as the major radius and external segments are defined. We'll install add underscore torus as an official Blender operator and then run it. After that, we'll look at the code for a script that changes any mesh into a monkey and it's called Monkify from Blender Artist user Crouch. The URL is in the notes. The script adds Monkify to the tool shelf automatically. Start up Blender and delete the default cube. Right click to select, press the delete key, and press enter to confirm. Switch to the scripting setup. Open addTorus.py by going to the op folder and selecting the script. The actual code to add the torus is the addTorus function. We won't go into the nitty gritty details of the calculation for actually adding it. We'll take it on faith that when add torus is called, it produces a torus. I just want to point out that this function returns two items, a list of vertices and a list of faces. Next, the properties are defined. Each property has a default, minimum, maximum, and health text. Properties have a data type, such as float property, int property, and bool property bool property would be true or false, so it's short for boolean. Float property is for numbers with decimals, like major radius. Int property is for whole numbers, like major segments. Bool property is for true-false values, usually displayed as a checkbox, where true equals checked and false equals unchecked. Major radius, for example, has a float property. Its default is 1.0, with a minimum of 0 0.1, a maximum of 100.0, and help text explaining that it's the radius from the origin to the beginning of the cross sections. We'll see how to change the major radius when we actually create the torus. Use underscore ABSO is a Boolean property shown as a checkbox for whether the internal or external controls are needed for the torus dimension. The execute function actually creates the torus. First, the properties we created earlier in the code are retrieved. Then the use underscore ABSO property is tested. And if true, the extra calculations for internal and external controls are done. Then add underscore torus is called, returning the verts and faces for the torus. In the next section, the mesh variable is created in memory and the verts and faces are added to it. The code scene equals context dot scene returns the active scene. And this code adds the torus to the scene. Finally, the function checks to see whether or not we're in edit mode or object mode. If in edit mode, the mesh is joined with the previous mesh. If in object mode, the torus becomes the active object and the torus is in edit mode. The rest of the code adds the new add torus function to the menu of available operators so it can run from within Blender. Let's install and run add underscore torus. Click the Run Scripts button. Switch to the default view. From the search window, type in Add Torus, or enough of it so you can see it. Click on the Add Torus button. There's a panel at the bottom of the tool shelf. Unlike in Blender 2.4x, where you set the properties before the torus is created, in 2.5, the torus is created first with the default settings for each property. At the bottom of the tool shelf is a panel that has the defaults. You can change these if you don't like them. Remember that in the code, the major radius had a default of 1.0, a minimum of 0 0.1, and a maximum of 100.0. Let's change the major radius to 0. We can't because the major radius becomes 0 0.1, the minimum. Similarly, if you try to change the major radius to 99999, it's reset to its maximum of 100.0. You can do the same to any other parameter, such as major segments, which has a minimum of 3 and a maximum of 256. 
The torus changes in real time according to the new settings. Here's another example called Monkify from Blender Artist user Crouch. In it, he changes the default cube to a monkey by creating a Python operator. As we saw in part three, once this operator is registered, it can become a tool on your tool shelf. You can also search for it and run it anywhere in Blender. Switch back to the scripting window. Create a new text window. I pasted the Monkify script, which you can get from the links to the notes. Monkify is simply another Blender operator which replaces the current mesh with a monkey. The poll function makes sure Monkify can run. It checks whether there's an active object and that the active object is a mesh. If that's not true, it doesn't run. The invoke function gets the data of the active object. If you look in the help at bpy.ops.mesh in the API documentation, you can see what you can do to a mesh, letting the program do what you would do. By invoking the select underscore all function in edit mode twice, this ensures that all the vertices are selected. Then the vertices are all deleted. The function bpy.ops.mesh.primitive underscore monkey underscore add, with the location being passed, actually adds the monkey at the location. At the bottom of the code, the new operator, object underscore ot underscore monkify, object underscore ot underscore monkify is registered. The prepend function places the new operator at the top of the tools menu. We can now run monkify. Voila, the Taurus is now a monkey. I hope that you enjoyed this tour of mesh creation scripts in Python 2.5. If you did, don't forget to hit the YouTube subscribe button and to discuss my tutorial at forum.iracrackout.com. Happy blendering!